and everyone will be limited to two minutes. If we have more than that wanting to speak, we'll, we will consider going down to one minute. But for now, it's two minutes, three minute total. Okay, looks like we're at eight total. It's not moving up from there, so. Not yet? Or... <laughs> All right, let's go ahead with the first one. Okay, go ahead, uh, Marsha. Thank you, Honorable Board Members. Right, Marcia. Marcia. Protect Biona Wetlands. Um, I'm wanting to speak with you today because I'm very disturbed that what you approved of money in May 2021, which was very explicit what you approved the money for, is now being used by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, the grantee, for something completely different. And I know we have constant challenges with this Biona Wetlands project, but this is one of the biggest bait and switch things I've ever seen. Uh, they now are, the money was supposed to go for, among other things, uh, <clears throat> dealing with some of the sea level rise issues, making sure that the flood risk assessment that the Army Corps of Engineers had concerns about would be addressed, and, and some general outreach, which hasn't been done, none of these things, but they're instead they've hired a consultant that is working on sequence number one and two and moving that some project, some part of the original big project, which is much worse than we anticipated as we see what the consultant is looking at now. I mean, they're looking at obliterating some of the most important habitat that's actually functioning at the Bayona wetlands. So, um, you know, they're gonna come to the Coastal Commission, they're gonna come to the Water Board, all these various things. This is totally not what you approved the money for. And I just want, would love to see you <laughs> do what uh, Ms. Nadhoff and Mr. Aliotto had asked that, that these have some report backs to the board and uh, really look at what's being done because this is, this is fraudulent. It's not, not right to use the money. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Next person, please. The persona, por favor. Uh, go ahead, Patricia. Um, Patricia McPherson, Grassroots Coalition. Um, to add on to what Marcia had just said, these are for borings and corings to be done that um, do have the potential to uh, destroy habitat. This is a waiver application that was put in by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. It has been described as a CDP. We did tremendous outreach because we learned about this through a Public Record Act request, um, which also for the Native Americans that were alerted to this, um, it's an after the fact alert. Uh, looks like we lost her. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, we're mo moving her back over. Sorry. Oh, we're moving her back over. Okay. Am I? I'm. Keep going. Now I was disconnected. I don't know why, but I am here. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, again, this was a, a waiver application. The Native Americans that received this received this as essentially an after the fact. Um, by the time they would have any time for input on sequence one and two and even these borings, the decision has already been made to pay for these borings to take place, to pave the way for the initiation of excavation and uh, channeling of bringing in saltwater intrusion into Biona wetlands. Um, for the Coastal Conservancy to be supplying the funding for this is prejudicing um, the Coastal Commission. It's prejudicing yourself with regard to um, 
I, as Mr. Aliotto said, he thought that this was uh, something that a ship had not sailed. This is a process. Ms. Nodoff said that this is a process, not a project. Well, it is a project. And you did approve um, the certified FEIR. We need to get answers from you. We are not getting any response from you. Despite your uh, discussions in your strategic plan about outreaching to the public, perhaps Biona is an anomaly, but we are the anomaly then because we are not getting answers from you. You have refused to agendize these issues and we have no place to go. This is highly frustrating. And there you go. All right. Next. All right. Uh, thank you very much. This is Dave Spock with Redwood Coast Land Conservancy once again. Uh, thank you so much for supporting our wildfire resilience proposal. And thank you, Member Brownsey, for coming to visit. It was a pleasure to uh, show you around. I wanted to speak briefly about another success story uh, funded by the Conservancy. In May 2020, the Conservancy approved a grant to purchase the Mill Bend property uh, for eventual conveyance to the Redwood Coast Land Conservancy, and also uh, approved a grant for planning, uh, for conducting a conservation plan uh, to restore ecological health and conserve natural plant wildlife habitats and provide appropriate public access to the 113 acre preserve. In August 30, on August 30th, I transmitted the final conservation plan, including three detailed design exhibits, 12 technical appendices to Lisa Ames, the Conservancy's project manager. On Saturday, September 17th, we conducted our final round of agency, stakeholder and community engagement uh, in the conservation planning process with a community open house at the Wallala Arts Center attended by more than 80 people. During the 16 month planning period, our CLC convened two community wide fora, two technical workshops with partner agencies and stakeholders throughout the community and North Coast region and dozens of individual and small group meetings with coastal residents and landowners, agency and NGO staff, subject matter experts and volunteer participants. Environmental science and design firm Pranesky Chatham prepared the conservation plan that honors this tremendous input and articulates action for day-to-day -day preserve management and long-term restoration and protection of aquatic uh, resources. Right, out of time. Thanks again. Lisa, thank you and enjoy your retirement. <laughs> All right, thank you. Go ahead, Next. Susanna. Margo Griswold, uh, speaking for Los Angeles Audubon Society on the Biona wetlands. And I would like to support what uh, Patricia McPherson and Marsha Hanscom said before. This is a project that you approved for looking at the incorrect hydraulic study done for the final EIR within the Biona flood control channel, as well as public outreach. This is what you as the commission board approved. And now we find out, no, the money is being spent for design of sequence one and two, which will bring muted tidal channels into areas of the Biona wetlands where no muted tidal channels or any type of tidal channel ever existed in the past. This all in some misguided uh, project to already, you know, to harm what is already growing there, which is salt marsh habitat. We already have habitat in this area. There is no reason for this sequence one and two to move forward, especially since there has never been a groundwater hydrology study, a study for the land management and connection of habitats with groundwater, surface water. None of this has been done. This is what we bring up time and time again. We would like to have some answers. We feel really disrespected after so many years of asking. This is what makes Biona different. You disrespect the public. We would like some answers to our questions. 
Okay. Uh, next. Uh, Suzanne, go ahead. Van, are you out there? She's unmuted, but we can't hear her. All right. So we better go on to the next one then. Uh, next is Kathy Knight. Kathy Knight, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, I'm Kathy Knight with the Biona Ecosystem Education Project. And we've been uh, volunteering for 30 years now to protect the Biona wetlands ecosystem in Los Angeles here. It's a very rare, mostly freshwater coastal wetland. Uh, migratory birds use it and all kinds of animals. So uh, the reason we're here is that there were some funds approved, 44 people spoke in May 2021, and the funding was approved for the, for the wetlands. Um, it was for reconsider marsh elevations uh, with sea level rise um, and environmental um, EIS and uh, 408 permit. Um, but the funding um, seems to have been abandoned and we don't know why. Um, what, what have these funds been used for? It was about 1.69 million. Um, what have they been used for? Um, and what we would like to uh, find out is why they've been abandoned and so that we consider, uh, if, they, if they have, consider a new use, such as basic stewardship of the area and um, looking at more viable alternatives. Um, so we would like to know uh, why they were abandoned and um, uh, to, to have an explanation of that. Um, and the last thing is that we also are very concerned about um, an applica application for non-permit uh, boring in the wetlands made by the Coastal Conservancy. And um, it's without a permit waiver. So we're very concerned about that going on and the public wasn't aware of that till very recently um, that, that you were doing that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next. Next is Walter Lamb. Good afternoon, board members. Uh, Walter Lamb with the Bino Wetlands Land Trust. Uh, earlier this year, your senior staff made the remarkable decision to allow the Department of Fish and Wildlife to discard the clearly defined set of tasks and deliverables, along with the related policy objectives, which you authorized roughly $1.7 million in public bond funds in May of 2021. And to spend that money instead on an entirely different set of tasks and deliverables, which have starkly different ramifications for all of the policy objectives that you claimed were important to you when you authorized the funds. Those policy objectives included sea level rise, accurate flood control standards, equitable public access to coastal resources, tribal consultation, and general community engagement. Your lack of follow through on these very issues that you profess to care about is alarming because to solve the big problems facing our planet, we're gonna need more than just funding and plans. So we're gonna need decision makers who keep their promises. I can't find a single piece of information to indicate that even one board member requested an update to understand how the new scope of work to which your funding was diverted would affect the policy objectives that the money was intended to advance. Any parent anywhere in the state who's trying to help their children cope with climate anxiety should pay close attention to what's happening at the Vino Wetlands. It sends a shiver up my spine to think that all the important principles articulated in your strategic plan may just get watered down by political and financial interests and that we can't count on you to prevent that from happening. Also, Chair Bosco, along with board members Alio and Nodoff, you've suggested that you only approve money for a process, not a project. I wanna remind you of the actual language that you voted to adopt in May, 2021. It says, staff is recommending the Conservancy adopt the California Department of Fish and Wildlife findings for the Biona Wetlands Restoration Project 
under exhibit, uh, under CEQA exhibit three, is the Conservancy's own responsible agency findings in support of its funding of the Bino Wetlands Restoration Project. And now that's been whittled down to this thing that they're calling the Bino Wetlands Restoration Sequences One and Two Project. It's a project, it's not a process. And so we'd really appreciate it if you would at least just acknowledge what it is you actually approve. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next. Next is uh, Gabriel Crow. Hi, uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable board members. My name is Gabrielle Crow. I am the vice chair for the tri Gabrielina Shoshone Tribal Council of Southern California. I wanted to come in and actually say thank you to the Coastal Conservancy for the access that has been granted. I know that um, there's there's a lot of contention and there's a lot, it's a hot button issue. And I just wanna say that it's been really amazing to be able to take students out to the Bayona wetlands and actually teach them not only about conservation, but also talking about the my ancestral homelands and talking about how important it is for us to save this special gem that's down in Los Angeles. And so I just encourage um, other Coastal Conservancy members to maybe um, be able to come and visit the Bayona wetlands, because I know a lot of times um, you get bogged down, you guys do such amazing work. Um, but I know that a lot of times we feel like in Southern California, we're kind of we're kind of the last thing on the list. And I feel like it would be great to actually come and come for a field trip and see how the students are learning. And it's just an amazing place. Um, it's very special to my family. And I wanna thank you for the access. And I also want to thank you for actually following through with a lot of the meetings that I've gone to and asking for uh, tribal consultation, tribal engagement, because I was recently actually at a meeting there on Tuesday with um, some other tribal, Gabrielino tribal members. So. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Obviously, there's there's more work that needs to be done, but I appreciate that we're trying to work on an open working relationship. So thank you. Hey, thank you. Um, next. Uh, next is Jane Velez Mitchell. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Well. Um, sort of to recap and review, there is huge and escalating outrage over the scam restoration plan for the Biona wetlands. So the public is realizing, to boil it down, you are trying to accomplish piecemeal what the public is outraged over wholesale. But please be advised we are also outraged over the piecemeal attempt to destroy the Biona wetlands under the guise the green washing guys of restoration. Number two, we're very upset about money being designated for one purpose and then being inappropriately diverted to another purpose. Three, we are very well aware that the Department of Fish and Wildlife has let the perimeter of the Biona wetlands deteriorate, allowing vans and RVs and trash to accumulate to try to make the argument that, oh, look at it, it's a mess, we have to restore it. But we are smarter than that we know that cleaning up the perimeter does not require destroying the interior. And we have a gentle restoration plan, a 20 point detail plan that achieves all the legitimate goals of restoration without bulldozing because we don't need to be beholden to the gas industry. The only reason the bulldozers are there is to get down to the pipes that are deteriorating that surface the giant gas storage facility a mile beneath the wetlands that is similar to the Aliso Canyon. The LA City Council has said, shut it down. The people of LA want to shut it down. And I will say that public pressure is mounting. I live right near the Bayona wetlands. It's all anybody can talk about. We are in the midst of a sixth mass extinction. I beg you to see the big picture. This is not the time to devastate 1,700 species, including threatened and endangered species who have nowhere else to go. Okay, um, next. Uh, next is Mary Beth. Uh, I do wanna mention that we have six remaining attendees that raised their hand for uh, public speaking. Okay, we only have about 12 minutes left, so that would consume all of the time. Okay. Go ahead, Mary Beth. Um, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mary Beth Trotwine. I'm a resident of Venice, California, and a member of Protect Playa Now. Um, I've spoken before, before the Coastal Conservancy, 
And I just wanted to call to your attention that it has been six months since the executive committee promised to keep the board updated on how money is being spent on Biona. Yet there are not any updates given the high level of public interest and given the major change in how the CDFW is spending the money you granted to them. Why hasn't it been an, an informational update had been added to the agenda? Um, as recorded in March of this year, board member Nothoff stated, I think that because this motion is about a process of transparency, some type of reporting, reporting back to staff as to how it is going, who got hired to conduct that, who is participating, I think I would appreciate having some regular check-in on those matters, stated by board member Nothoff in March. And in response, the executive officer, Amy Hutzel, assured her that the board would be kept informed. Why are not board members following through on things that you said are important to you? They're important to obviously many people here commenting today and many people living in this area. Um, please make sure that you understand how these things are impacting the change and we would like to know how the money is being spent. Thank you for your attention. And I just like to say that I've enjoyed thoroughly Throughout the day, hearing about amazing projects up and down our coastline, I've enjoyed it every time I've joined these meetings, um, even though they're long, and I really appreciate all your efforts. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next. Next is uh, Sarah Segal. Segal. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I would like to uh, just let everyone know here that we're talking about our future and everybody always talks about how, you know, the future of, for our children is the most important thing, but what you're doing is destroying their future because this is bulldozing everything. You talk about a gentle restoration, but yet you've got bulldozers there. And this is mounting, as you can see from all these public comments, I'm standing actually on my client's balcony who overlooks the Biona wetlands. And it's such a disgrace that she paid over a million dollars for her condo and that you guys are just literally giving her a slap in the face. So this to me is very personal because we're not even allowed to go on the land. Every time we try to go over there, you guys try to call the police on us. The whole thing is just ridiculous. You guys are like a grown adults that are trying to literally ruin everything in Los Angeles, our whole environment. This is ridiculous, 1,700 species. You think they're gonna go live at the Home, De you know, the Home Depot parking lot? The fact that you're just continuing to hide things, it's just coming out more and more and it's gonna get out in the media and you guys are gonna end up getting caught. And so you should go ahead and come clean now and stop you know, hiding everything that you're doing because we all know, everyone knows now. So I think that it's just unfortunate that we have to wait five hours just to make a comment in the middle of the day about you guys destroying the whole entire environment of Los Angeles because this is all about money and we all know that you do things based on money decisions. If you're building a new playground, you need to get a budget. Well, we wanna see your budget because you're switching things around. So you need to come clean and stop, you know, acting like a bunch of, you know, like criminals because this is ended up, it's in, gonna end up in court because you guys are committing fraud. So I would just like for you guys to do a gentle restoration like you agreed on and stop destroying everything in Los Angeles. Thank you. Okay, next. Next is Leslie Purcell. Hi, you can hear me okay now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to appreciate, I was so glad to hear what Gabrielle Crow said about the access of her tribal groups being able to go on the land and work with students and do education and um, cultural education as well. So I'd like to encourage more of that. Um, my real other concern is with the um, proposed so-called restoration plans that would allow so much more salt water. There's already salt water intrusion and with sea level rise planning, um, any greater inflow of salt water is contrary to policies that um, the Coastal Commission and other entities are developing around sea level rise. So 
I'd like to see, again, um, consideration, as has been said, with a more gentle restoration of the wetlands and um, more community input, as well as community access um, in, in a careful way. So thank you very much. We need more public awareness and education opportunities for kids as well. So thank you. Thank you. Next. Next, we have uh, Suzanne coming. Go ahead and speak. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Oh, great. Okay. I'm Suzanne Cumming. I'm a lawyer. I'm a member of Defend Bayona Wetlands. I too am concerned about the money that you gave to CDFW for the Bayona Wetlands. At the May 2021 meeting, board member Nothoff stated, and I'm going to quote this. I had a clip, but I can't quite play it. Uh, Quote, one of the reasons I feel that I can support this is that I think we have very clear marching orders here of stakeholders that need to be more fully engaged in a more upfront leadership way, unquote. I'm confused that those very clear marching orders about those marching orders because there's been no public outreach to stakeholders like me. I'm asking board member Nothoff, can you help us get some answers today? Um, and I agree with every, everything everybody else has said. There's a, a scam here going on by CDFW. I, I'm concerned about that. And the public is, more public is gonna know about this. Uh, so uh, let's have some public input. Let's get the money back and discuss how it should be spent according to the issues that are important to you. Thanks so much. All right, thank you. Next. Next is Christina Ku. Hello, can you hear yes. me? Yes, yeah. great. Yeah, so I've just uh, caught some of the other speakers um, and we've read documents uh, and looked at a lot of different information and know that all of that is valid. So I'm really glad folks brought that issue up to you. And as far as, you know, paying another department, Department of Fish and Wildlife money, and it's not being used for what it was directed for. I mean, we're talking about that's that deceitful. And I don't know if it's even bordering on, on fraudulent actions by both the, uh, the giver of the money and the receiver of the money. So this is a really serious matter. And I understand there are even lawsuits going on. I mean, there are at least four lawsuits that we've read about. So all this has already gone to the public. It's not that it's catching on. People do know, and that's what's prompting us and encouraging us to keep participating because we're all watching. And um, very distraught to learn that I've been on calls with the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And, you know, this is a department that, um, you know, sadly to a lot of people have become the department that encourages people to kill innocent animals. I mean, that they should recall themselves. I was on the call all day with them and they're encouraging, they're finding a way to encourage kids to start shooting and killing animals. So I don't even know why we're entrusting all this protection and guardianship, stewardship of animals and land to a department that encourages kids as young as 12 to go out and kill animals. So that in itself doesn't even make sense to me in this, um, in our politics. And have you read the restoration plan that's been submitted by Defend Biona Wetlands, the nonprofit? I mean, can someone just raise a hand? Okay. All right, I see one from my view. So I encourage the rest of you to please read that. You can't make decisions without reading that. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more speaker. This is the last speaker, uh, Robert Roy Vandehoek. Go ahead, Robert. Okay, I'm ready. If Are you ready? Yes. Yes, we're ready. Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert uh, Roy Vandehoek, and I am um, an environmental scientist. And um, I would like to speak to the money that you approved for the project on the Biona River levees 
and removing them. And uh, interestingly, the United States Army engineers, and by the way, they did they did good today, and you did good with them early this morning on San Francisco Bay, and they're doing good now at Bayona too. They want the levees to remain intact uh, because of flood control and risks of, of injury, harm, health. So they want the levees to stay intact. And that makes the Department of Fish and Wildlife Restoration Plan uh, moot now. And that's what you've been approving money uh, for many years to do. And so now they're coming up with a new project, but it hasn't gone through an EI you know, EIR process, a CEQA process, environmental review, and it's like starting over again. And they're avoiding having the US Army be involved by doing a project away, like a piecemeal and a different project. And you need to like withdraw your funding and hear the project again of what they wanna do. They're trying to go through the Coastal Commission in this process. And I just want to tell you that there's an in, many endangered and rare and sensitive species in the area that they want to do this project. One of them is the wandering skipper. And another one is the winter non-breeding habitat for the young belding savanna sparrows. It's, it's non-tidal for the most part, but there's also a tidal slough there that passes through the, the gas company, Sempra Energy's uh, tidal area of that marsh. And uh, I want to wrap up with saying with the Native American culture that we're, uh, we're doing great education there at this time. Thank you. All right, that concludes item 22, the public comments. I do want to thank everyone who participated in that. We appreciate hearing your views.